Um, the blues. The blues. Well, um, you're on Triple M. This is Keith Richards, the Rolling Stones. So it is. Welcome. So it is. <laughs> We've been chatting for the last five minutes about other stuff, but you know, this is exactly how I imagine you, by the way, sitting opposite me with um, a vodka and orange, and maybe in a. In a... Yeah, yeah. I think you, you're, you're a discerning chap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the new I'm, album. I've been up all night. Do me a favor. No, that's good. <laughs> And you just got in from uh, from Vegas. You had the the shows there, um, or one show there, and then of course Desert Trip, which must have gone down pretty well. Yeah, yeah. The, the desert was very interesting. Um, I mean, we played festivals. We've done mills, and I mean, yeah. um, it, it was kind of it, it was a weird setup, you know. I mean, but we're working with Bob Dylan, so I don't give a shit. You know? That's the thing, and everyone was so yeah, excited yeah, about yeah, that. That's the build. I mean, I, Bob Dylan, the Stones, had a great chat with Bob while I was there, and we kicked around a few ideas. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I do love Bob. Always have. And he's, uh, <laughs> who can not? You guess the Nobel Peace Prize. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, that was that was and, that know, was a putting pen to paper. Nice surprise. And, yeah. and, uh, about time. Apparently, I was supposed to get it for chemistry, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell you what, you've outlived a lot of people, and I reckon you should get one for that as well. Living's got anything to do with it. It's just the way I outlived them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There's an expertise here, which yeah. I know nothing about, but other people seem to think that I have got a handle on chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> Bull crap. Yeah. I just say, yeah, don't do as I do. Uh, is that what you say to the kids? Yeah, no, no, it's not for everybody. Yeah. And yeah. anyway, I mean, all of that stuff, I mean, I carry that around like the ball and chain, you know. I mean, yeah. That was then. I was having fun then. I was, uh, but, hey, I'm a mature, grown, uh, older statesman <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> you know. So, a lot of people don't know, you were in the choir, you know, you, you were, yeah. uh, and, and you did, you know, um, some... You know, the, the big, huge churches in London, um, Westminster Abbey, I think was one. Yeah, yeah. And you went from that... To yeah, being Keith so Richards. Down the first pink slip, <laughs> you're fired, the voice broke, you know, dying. Yeah. So, yeah, I had that lesson really early on, even though it was, I had no idea at the time of like, being part of show business or even you know, performing. Uh, yeah. But I suppose when you're in a choir without realising, you you know, you realise you're a performer. You, know, you, get, mm. you get to Westminster, where they take you around the back and, they, and there's your little... Uh, Choir boy shit, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking color. I mean, it's, so it's brilliant, and and the the we are the three worst reprobates in the school already, but we're the only ones that can sing. <laughs> yeah, and obviously yeah. pretty good. Otherwise we wouldn't have got there. But at the time, I didn't think it was any big deal. It was like a bus trip to London, and we just go and yeah. sing. You know, I mean, there's no like grandeur about it you know you're a bit overawed with the abbey and everything like that and, uh, at the same time when you're doing a gig you're doing a gig you're concentrating on your hallelujahs <laughs> did you ever want to be the lead singer or, or did, did that ever cross your mind or were you, were you always happy with um you know being the legendary guitarist did you ever sort of oh, oh you know? um actually i the pull that together um, what I'm really happy about and, and I may be proud about even is like being able to pull a band together yeah you know? yeah yeah I guess in the, the choir thing did teach me certain things about teamwork and you know and so in, in a few years later uh, to me you know it was uh, putting the band together to create a unique sound that, uh, you know, they're not copying. Hey, you've got to do a lot of copying when you're learning. You know, you're always you know, influences and stuff, but to get a bunch of guys together that can create their own sound, you say, it's definitely them. <laughs> you know, even if you were blind and deaf, yeah. <laughs> you still feel yeah. the rhythm. Um, I'm blessed with the working with people like Charlie Watts. Mick Jagger, yeah. obviously, 
Yeah. You know? yeah. We have our things about how stones should go here and there, but that's just, uh, you know, shit the people. If you didn't have about. that, you wouldn't be where you are now. No, right? no. Yeah. There's, there's a little push and shove here and there, but uh, I mean, the, what makes a pearl, you know, is that little bit of grit, you know, yeah. <laughs> in an oyster. Um, so I, I take that as it comes. Uh, we actually got along. Making this blues record was like, to me, it was such fun because I saw Mick getting carried away with what he's really good at and like giving him all the space and air that you don't get when you're cutting necessarily, you know, songs you've written yourself and yeah. then you're trying to figure out things. It was like, this record just sort of happened on us. It, 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 well, I heard <laughs> it from, imposed yeah. itself. I heard from Ronnie that, that, that he was saying how Mick got excited about the creative process and, and you know, where to put a harmonica solo or, or harp solo or, you know, putting these, these songs together from hearing them on an iPhone, you know. Yeah. No, it, it was something that Mick does totally naturally. That most there's, I can't think of any other exponents of that kind of music around. You know, he's an incredible harp player, and he also has that thing when singing. You know, to know when to put the harp in and when to pull back. This yeah. is. Uh, this stuff that's sort of built into you, you know, you don't, you know, you've learned it many years ago and you don't use it often, but to me, this record is a beautiful showcase for Mick's expertise. Now, and, and also to capture him in, uh, in full flow, enjoying himself. Yeah. You know, instead yeah. of like working on things, you know what I mean? Like, so once uh, I called Ronnie up, few weeks before the session I said get this blues track down just because we might need it to uh, get the sound in the room together and you know right, we don't yeah. want to waste our efforts on a new song you know while you know you're working in a new room and uh, that was blue and and yeah, and after two days yeah. it proved to be true that uh, <laughs> this room is like you know it's fighting us <laughs> and so I said Ronnie blue and lonesome uh, and after that, it all fell into place, and it was uh, all you know, so like, yeah, who am I? Yeah, <laughs> three days, uh, if yeah, that. I mean, five days, 11 tracks. Now, that is a record in itself, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for the Stones, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So it was obviously different as opposed to writing an, a new song. Uh, you know, you're able to... Yeah, I know, think maybe yeah. the, the pressure off of, like, hmm. the, you know, writing the song, saying, this is my song, and just be doing other people's songs, and songs that we've always loved, and uh, sort of built in, this is how the, the band started. This is, uh, the, this record is basically, the Rolling Stones are about 20 years, 19, 20 years old, except we can do it better now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so it can be recorded better. You know? Yeah, so you're having more fun now than ever before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, when we started in England, uh, engineers had no, you know, no concept of how to record something like this. You know? Yeah. So you, you were fighting almost everything, but you know, the technology for what it was really low. Believe me, the uh, soundproofing was egg boxes. <laughs> uh, yeah. and Still is some. The recording yeah. machine was a Grundig, and it was set on the wall. Which made it look more professional, right? Than yeah. if it was lying on the bloody table, you know. And it's like, otherwise, but and it was, you know, that first album was a, but I don't know. There's always been a, a certain fascination, especially for Mick and myself, about recording. How do you get what sounds great in the front room or in the bathroom or in the bedroom? how to make it sound like that in the studio and how yeah. you capture it. I mean, recording's a, a tricky business and uh, I mean, you really have to have the guys that know what's what, it really helps. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm talking to him about Mr. Charlie Watts specifically. Mm. He did a great job. And, yeah, uh, he did a great job, man. And, and best in the world, you know, he's up there. And the blues is something 
you guys have always been fans of growing up with it, the early stuff especially. We were a blues and, uh, band to start with, yeah. you know, and that was, I mean, all of this stuff would be, uh, nearly every one of those songs would be part of our, a normal Rolling Stones set in 1962. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And in fact, one of the songs on the album was was in the first set, wasn't it? That's one of the one of the songs was uh, performed at the Marquee Club at the, your very first gig, wasn't it? Yeah, think. yeah. There's probably, yeah, probably I think it was three, Ride them on down. I think it was. I think ride them on down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, these songs were like the, our bread and butter. You yeah. Know? And this is our our ambition was to be this really hip, cool blues band, the best blues band in London. That was the size of the. You know, ambition. Mm. <laughs> it's just to be, yeah. You know, you want to, you want to hear some good shit. You know, you go see the stars, you know, and uh, and we'd have, you know, four or five gigs a week. Pretty cool. You know, you're getting a few bits of bread. You know, you're getting the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> but that yeah. was the height of ambition uh, until suddenly, boom. Probably the Beatles. I had obviously had a lot to do with this because I don't think. Mm. Uh, Without them, uh, we would have been totally unacceptable, uh, you know, uh, on a mass basis. Or, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but they kind of, they opened the heel. And once that happened, uh, you know, the sort of floodgates opened. And uh, I mean, they surprised us. I mean, because we thought we'd be the only guys in, in the country, you know, in England. It's a very small country. Yeah. It seems large when you're living in it. <laughs> and that's all you know. A uh, bunch of guys in Liverpool up there. You know, I mean, actually, they were a vocal group. I mean, but at the same time, another band into rhythm and blues was like a revelation to us. And I had the who. We were a revelation well. to them and all. Yeah. Now, who were you listening to when you, when you were growing up? Who, who passed down... All this music. Uh, uh, I mean, but then you go to, I mean, I had to go to Mum, really. Yeah. Uh, BBC, Great Taste in Music, Duke Ellington, Sarah Vaughan, jazz, basically, most yeah. of it, you know, some blues thrown in, but you, if you were lucky. Um, but I, yeah, my mum had really, uh, so I grew up. Uh, with her taste in music, I know Billie Holiday was a sort of daily diet to be Louis Armstrong. So I got a good grounding in music without even knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so when I got into playing blues, I it wasn't a long hop for me. So was, if you listen to Louis Armstrong and Billie Holiday, and they, you know, they, you're pretty much there already, you know, and it was... Uh, but then, of course, Elvis Presley came along and Scotty Moore, and I go, whoa, now I find a way to express myself. <laughs> and Chuck Berry, obviously, as well. And Chuck, yeah. coming in with, without the mentioning Mr. Berry, you know, not only mm. a great player, man, but a great songwriter. Yeah. You know, up there. I think I should have got the one, actually, uh, that Bob got. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, that's splitting hairs, yeah. quite honestly, you know. And yeah, uh, the two great writers for popular music, and at the same time, their music sort of grounded in solid roots, you know. I mean, it's two mm. cats always oh, hats off, you know. Well, there's, there's a famous video of um, you jamming with Chuck Berry and um, Eric Clapton. I don't know what year it was, but. But he was ordering you around. He was like, you I know, was trying to. Yeah. And I had to order him around. You know? <laughs> it was like, yeah, but they caught it on film. Yeah, that was Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll. It was yeah. a great video. That was yeah. Chuck's 60th birthday, which means yeah. that was 30 years ago. A mere 30. Um, was it? Was it before or after he punched you? Oh, <laughs> that, oh no, he punched me before that. <laughs> yeah. But it's quite right. I mean, yeah. if anybody was fiddling around with my guitar in a dressing room, mm. and I mean, I just took the, I took the, you know, took the, I said, Chuck's the greatest hit. <laughs> so what happened? So you went, you went into his recording in his uh, yeah, dressing no, room. Also, he knew I was the only other motherfucker that can get close to him. Yeah. You know, so he's got an antsy with me, you know. <laughs> so, and we've lived with that. It, uh, Chuck Berry, 
relationship with me is very similar to my relationship with Mick Jagger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I love you, you know, bang. <laughs> You guys have done well though, haven't you? Like 50, 54 years or whatever it is, and you know, like. Nah, it's not. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, when it comes down to it, the uh, you know, brothers fight now and again. But, yeah. Uh, and people hear about that more than they, you know, the, the other 98% of the time, uh, we're like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well, they don't, they don't see that uh, presence on stage when you guys are like, uh, like smiling at each other, you know, you would. You and Ronnie particularly, I, I, I see it. You know, you guys are having fun. It's got to be, man. It's yeah. got to be. I can't, I would, the idea of going up there is... Because uh, I see other cats, you know, over the years. I mean, many of them, like, like, to go up on stage is the grind. Uh, <laughs> no, not for this lot. You know, it's like, let me out the cage, get some peace and quiet, you know, and, uh, t and turn people on. It's, uh, I always want to play Satisfaction better than I played it the night before. And I'm still finding new ways of... Weird thing is, you see, in this game, you write a song, yeah, and it's probably in the can within a week, you know, yeah. especially in the early days of Satisfactions, Brown Sugars, and uh, you've only just so... Uh, got to the bones of the thing and and it's a hit and that everybody's going la 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 but you realise you don't really know this song yet and it, it'll take another you can play it for another 50 years on stage and go I wish I'd put that lick on the record <laughs> you know, and you're still it's still evolving for you you know so uh, as long as it goes like that I ain't not no beef or nothing you know so the new album, it's the 23rd album, they're the same 50 years in the making. Is it an album you could have done a long time ago, but this was the right time? It chose its own timing, you know, yeah. and it just happened to happen when it happened. Uh, if we'd have planned it or said we're going to do it, we probably wouldn't have. It's just that uh, the time was right, the place was right, and... Uh, and um, it was ready. We, it, we didn't say we were going to cut a blues album. Yeah. Yeah. It was only after it had been cut that we said, we have a blues album. And we <laughs> haven't even covered Eric Clapton and coming in to join his yeah, work. Yeah, Eric was in Studio 2 in the joint that we were in. The, the, his yeah. other local mate. The, the, <laughs> yeah. Eric coming in. Uh, you know, for a couple of tracks, yeah. Bless his heart. Love Eric. Well, look, we can't wait for the album December 2. Uh, Blue and Lonesome. And we're so glad that you did that song in that studio at that particular moment, otherwise the album wouldn't be here. Here you go. No, a bit of luck, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keith Richards, well, thanks for being on Triple M. Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Thanks. Yeah, man. Oh. Oh. Thanks, it's